If you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you've noticed that uh, I like to take pens apart, really talk about the build quality of the materials and the overall engineering assembly of pens. And one night, there was one pen I was taking apart for cleaning and started noticing all these little details. And that was the Lamy 2000. I went into it and I was just noticing little details I hadn't noticed before and was really blown away by them. And it ended up being a two-part series. I entitled it something along the lines of the best engineered fountain pen. And that was this bad boy right here. And I absolutely love it. There's so many great features. All these little things that were attention to detail. People went bonkers for it. They hadn't seen a video like that before. And that was me just uh, sitting down riffing, having fun with this pen. But there is one thing on this pen that drives me nuts. So for some people, what drives them nuts is the overall just look of the pen. I mean, who needs another black pen? Nothing special to see here. I sort of see where they're coming from. I personally like the styling. That's not what drives me nuts. Another thing that can drive a lot of people nuts is this section. And I get it, there's really no lip or you know intended grip position, it's really free form. It does slope down, so if you are like a close gripper and you get you know fairly close, I could see how you just would not like that. That would drive you nuts. I'm totally cool with that because I kind of grip a little further back here, but even then if you grip back there, these, these little these little tines that stick out with the whole clipping mechanism. If you haven't seen my uh, my two part videos on on ripping this thing apart, go go check that out. That was me just having some fun. I, I talk all about the little details on that. Um, you know, for some, I could I could see that bugs you, and your fingers sit on there. That drives you nuts. To me, they're so slight it almost lets me know where I should position it. So that's not what bugs me. For some folks, it's the notorious sweet spot that they talk about when it comes to the Lamy Two Thousand. I have absolutely zero problems with that. I know if you rotate the nib a bit, you're going to have some challenges. So if you are a bit of a different gripper with the pen, if you maybe hold your pen kind of back and rotate it this way, you can have some, some challenges and it's not the smoothest writing experience. But for me and for many folks, it's a fairly neutral position and the flow on this thing and everything else, this is an extra fine nib. And this is probably one of, if not the smoothest, extra fine nib I own. So that's not what bothers me either. But we are getting close to the thing that drives me nuts. For some, it's the hooded nib. You can't really see too much of it. It's small and the focus is bad. That doesn't bother me because aesthetically it goes really well with the pen. I think it looks just gorgeous. For me, it's the fact that this pen is supposed to be an extra fine nib. Okay, so this is the Lamy 2000. Extra fine. Let me show you what a Lamy medium nib looks like on a different pen. So same company, now we have a medium nib. And this is on the Lamy LX. The 2000 has a 14 karat gold. This is the steel nib. And I almost think that this medium is thinner then the extra fine, actually, let's just go side by side. I'll put some hash marks here. So here we go with the medium. There's actually a little hair stuck in it. And here we go with the Lamy 2000 extra fine. Like, I'm pretty sure, yes, the extra fine on the Lamy 2000 is thicker. Now, just the grind on the nib, how it works, the cross strokes, it's almost a slight architect. The, it's a unique grind on the 2000. Um, you can see that darn little hair that's in there. So in the cross strokes, absolutely. The down strokes is pretty close, maybe a touch finer, but for all intents and purposes, this extra fine is pretty much a medium. Now look, I understand that there's so many different manufacturers and there isn't like a universal standard for all the nib points. And so there will be some variance. But if you're gonna call something an extra fine, get it in the ballpark of an extra fine. I ordered this pen in an extra fine because, well, I had a specific purpose I was gonna use it for. Now I used it daily, um, using it for what I wanted to use it for, which is fill out a lot of forms and stuff like that, but it just ended up being too wide for that job. So I, I have other pens I do with that and I, and I enjoy using this pen, but I still wanted an extra fine point on here and I feel I just, I never got one. I got a medium, potentially even a broad in some circles, depending where you're buying from. So that, that kind of ticks me off a little bit here. Like such a well-designed pen, super well-manufactured 
And maybe if you're off by one size, I'll let it slide. But when you're off that much, uh, it just drives you bonkers. So I got a choice now. And now I discovered this with the Visconti, with the Homo sapien. I got this. This was supposed to be a fine. This was like the ultimate fire hose on like a thick medium or uh, a regular type of broad pin. And same thing. My writing style does not look good with a nib like that. So the pen sat around for years, even though it's just beautiful. It was just, uh, you know, a little window shopping there. You just look at the thing every day. That's how it was with this pen. Just never used it because I just grew frustrated. But then finally, after much waiting and, and contemplating, I sent it off, got it reground. And now <laughs> this is like my absolute favorite pen. It is exactly what I've wanted this pen to be the whole time. And I enjoy it. This is... This is with me pretty much every day as an everyday carry. And I absolutely love my Lamy 2000. And it, again, it kind of gets sidelined because I have lots of other options. That's one thing. But two, because it just, it doesn't suit my type of writing very well. So now I got two options. Two things I can do here. I can send it off to Mr. Bacchus like I did with my Visconti and get it back and I'll be super happy. But then I got thinking for a second, thought, wait a second. These are all fine or extra fine pointed pens. I have no shortage of those. What would be kind of cool is maybe should I grind this? It is a little bit of a trickier nib to work with. The, uh, the just the, the shape of the nib and especially the tipping material and the tripod is a wiggling, but hopefully you can see this. It's a bit of a funny shape to it, but uh, having a look at it, I thought, you know, I could probably do my favorite little cursive italic on here. And then I think it'd suit, suit me much better. My Mont Blanc 149 that I have, um, that's got a fine cursive italic. And I absolutely love how that thing writes. So maybe I could do the same thing with this Lamy 2000. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Um, you know, if, if you've had the same problem with the pen or maybe other things that drive you nuts about it, that's fine. Or what uh, What you think I should do with this one? Should I get the scent out to get ground to a proper extra fine? Or should I do a video and do the old homegrown? Oh, focus, you son of a... Or should I uh, grind this puppy at home and give it a nice little treatment? The, uh, the crowd pleaser, as I call it, the doodle bug grind that you've seen me do many times. I've done some giveaways with that as well. And then now this would be a great sort of journaling pen or if I got to take a notes and stuff like that. That's the thing with this pen. It does everything right. It pens. It, it has never hard started on me. The only time I had a challenge where it wasn't writing was I failed to notice it was out of ink. That's been it. Other than that, I've had no problems. The capping is so good on this pen. It posts. It feels comfortable. It just, yeah, I absolutely love this pen, but it's the damn nib, which is kind of the most important part of, of a pen at the end of the day. Uh, you know, case in point, this thing sat forever because the nib wasn't what I wanted it. And that's what's happening here. And what a waste of a brilliant pen. So I'd love to hear from you on that. What I'm going to do now to close things out, you heard me rant long enough. I'm just going to do some writing samples. These are all fine or extra fine, different brands. I got vintage in the back and all that stuff as well. Just to show you how far out of whack this nib size is on this pen. And also to... Um, I thought maybe it'd be cool to see Lamy re-release the 2000, have an updated version to it. Super popular pen. They got all sorts of colors with the Safaris. They've only done it a few times on here and the cost is expensive. That would be cool if they, they didn't jack the price up so much. Maybe they weren't limited and it was just regular run. If you could have a red one or a cool blue, like brighter blues instead of super dark. I don't know if that's even possible with the materials, but there could be a few things, a few little updates. Nib point could be one of them. Uh, there are some little design things you could do to, to maybe change that a little bit for some folks. Instead of having these little ears stick out, you could essentially do like a C-clip, but just have it all the way around other than like, say, one millimeter. And so that way the ring could compress a little bit when you go to slide it in. Now you would have this bump, but just all the way around. So that might be even worse, but that could be something where this goes all the way around. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to beat the crap out of this camera pretty soon. You could have the clip go all the way around, like I said there, and just leave a little slit in the middle so when you uh, cap the pen, it would compress. Um, the reason, again, if you don't watch the videos, but the reason those tabs are there is your traditional pen, when it's a slip cap, there'll be a bump back here 
Um, and then the body will, will mate with the cap and stop it from posting extra deep. Or they'll have the clipping, you know, the, the snap cap mechanism up here near the end. There'll be a, a dip that's in there, a little groove. And then on the pen, well, let's see if I can find one. Here we go here. So you'll have that type of capping mechanism. And then for a depth stop, you got this edge. So that way you can't go in too deep. Now there are some pens, I don't have it handy, but my Parker 51 original, it's, you know, kind of similar design actually to this, if you think about it a little bit. And it's just got a little clutch ring mechanism and it doesn't have this tab going on, but you can post a little too deep. If you've got heavy hands, you can get it and it kind of gets stuck because there's no depth stop. So you can't depth stop stop off of this here really you can't do that with the design and you, you can't if to have it flat and bulge out that just would kind of ruin the whole thing this the sleekness and lines on here you have to keep that the same so hence that's why these ears are here and uh, they also act as a depth stop so that you can't post it too deep and even if you push really hard i'm uh, let's show you here i'm really squishing on that comes out no problem if you do that with other pens uh, it's you're just going to jam it deeper and deeper and deeper. So there's really some um, method behind the madness for those folks that get annoyed by that. And there are some little other options you could do. But I would love to see an updated version of this, maybe a Pocket 2000. That would be really cool. But uh, same thing in the bottom. Maybe Lammy gets a hold of this video. If, if you guys can put in some changes or things you'd like to see, would you like to see a new updated version or Pocket version, stuff like that? Because I think it's such a great pen. For me, the only tweak is the nib point size. Let's hear what your tweaks are. Enough of my rambling. Finally, again, sorry. Let's do the writing sample comparison and uh, call it a wrap. Okay, so I went through all the different pens here just to give a comparison. So I, you know, I got the, the Pelican, the M805. Now the Pelican's are notorious for being a little bit of a thicker nib size, and I agree. But look at the massive difference between the Pelican Extra Fine and the Lamy 2000 Extra Fine. The Pelican looks more like a regular fine. Underneath, I grab my Gravitas pocket pen that has a Yovo nib, that's an Extra Fine. So there is a Western Extra Fine next to the Lamy 2000, not even close, my Pilot Elite. That's got that's a Japanese fine. Now we got the Opus 88. I don't know who makes their nibs. Maybe leave it in the comment if it's Bach or Yovo. I I think it looks like a Yovo, just the shape. I, you know, it could be wrong, obviously. That's an extra fine. You can see the contrast there. We got a, a couple Bach nibs, one from my Namasu and one from my Enso. One is the extra fine, and the other one is the fine. Again, massive difference. And I go on and on. We got the Mahjong, a one. I went vintage. So my Schaefer PFM and my Parker 1930s dual fold. They're both essentially like a fine, and then the Sailor fine. It's just a massive, massive difference. These are all pretty close with each other. Like even that Sailor and these vintage ones, you know, some are a little bit thinner. You can see like the Mahjong, that's a bit of a thinner fine, but they're all fairly close to each other. And then there's the outlier. Like just look at that thing. This is the Lamy LX. That's a steel nib. That's a medium. And I really think it that's thicker. So that is is quite far off. And then the problem kind of gets even worse if you're, this, this is uh, my Rhodia paper. I love using Muji because it's really, really good and it's super affordable. And, you know, it, if you have a wetter pen, it, it can bleed a little bit more, feather a bit more. It does have its limits. That's uh, avocado, the private reserve avocado in that Parker, in that, sorry, in the Pelican. It's just too much to handle for this paper. But even with all that feathering, it is significantly thinner than that. So, yeah, that is my biggest gripe. I absolutely love my 2000, like I've said many times here. Um, I need to fix this because I got to put this pen back into action. So let me know what you think if I should send it off, get it ground down properly, a nib reduction, or you'd like me to like to see me do the video and grind this into a cursive italic, which would almost be like a medium cursive italic <laughs> anyways. But there we go. Thanks for uh, listening to my little rant. Would love to hear more from you as well. Got lots of videos going on, but we'll finish off with a couple close-ups of some of these beauties I use here. And uh, we'll just leave it at that. And we'll catch you next time.